Hi, I'm Jeff Murrow, and I want to welcome you to True Texas History, where today we're going to talk about the Texas Capitol, because it was on this day, December the 8th, 1888, that the Texas Capitol was finished in terms of its building. Um, and there are things to be learned uh, in the from the Capitol and the way it is laid out, uh, and I'll go ahead and talk about some of those things. Um, yeah, one of the lessons I learned from homeschooling one of my sons uh, regarding architecture is that uh, the way a building is laid out in itself tells a story. Uh, it's conveying a message. And many times we think of, uh, you know, the Capitol building, government buildings as... Uh, you know, just places where business is done. We don't consider uh, the story and the message behind it. Well, uh, you've probably heard the stories about how they financed the capital uh, and how all that was done with the XIT Ranch. Uh, because in redoing the capital, they did so without raising any taxes. This was all done uh, with some creative uh, financing and selling off land. Now, uh, the building itself was, uh, you know, designed um, by a group, I believe, out of Illinois, actually Rock Island, Illinois, um, Matthias Schnell, uh, to be exact. And uh, the building itself uh, is in the shape of a Greek cross. Uh, you know, so if you looked at it from above, uh, it would uh, appear to be a Greek cross. Um, and, and these things were not done uh, willy-nilly, so there was some intention. They intended a message there. Now, as you go into the Capitol, uh, in metal letters set on that terrazzo floor, uh, what is uh, written out there are the famous battles uh, fought in Texas history. Uh, you have Gonzales, Anahuac, Velasco, Goliad, Coleto, the Alamo, and San Jacinto, each of these. So when you walk in there and you see that, that sends a message to you about the importance of each of these battles, that uh, we need to remember uh, that the freedoms and liberties that we have in Texas weren't just handed to us. They had to be fought for. Uh, there was a price to be paid. Uh, and uh, the men and women who were part of uh, that price were conveying a message. And the architects who were building this were carrying on that message and letting us know that. Uh, and so uh, it would do us good to remember. And besides the roll call of battles, it doesn't end there. Um, you, know, you also have uh, written in the floor things like Palo Alto and Palmito, uh, and then there are the battles of Galveston and Sabine Pass. These uh, are the main ones identified uh, there on the floor. And um, at least at the time it was constructed, uh, there were two statues and two documents. On the right wall is Davy Crockett, uh, and, uh, then across from Davy Crockett is the surrender of Sam, uh, surrender of Santa Ana, uh, to Sam Houston at the Battle of San Jacinto, um, which, uh, let me go ahead and point out that, uh, I believe it's Texas Precious Metals has a series of silver coins depicting, uh, some of the major battles in Texas. It's a series of four, and this year they came out with the final one, the Battle of San Jacinto, and uh, it's got that whole scene of Santa Ana being brought uh, to Sam Houston. So uh, that's a scene that uh, they want us to remember. Uh, and in the front room is also uh, the statues of, of Sam Houston and Stephen F. Austin by the uh, artist Elizabeth Ney. Uh, now, Elizabeth Ney, uh, she's a phenomenal sculptor. 
and uh, her works, um, you know, if you look at them, they're, they're very lifelike. Uh, now, with Sam Houston, Stephen F. Austin, uh, I find it interesting because, you know, as a historian, you know, uh, there are people in Texas history who are big fans of Austin, and there are people that are big fans of Houston. There always seems to be a tension between them. So even here in the Capitol, you find them opposite each other. Um, and then uh, the way it was designed, you had a copy of the Texas Declaration of Independence on one wall, and then on the other wall, a copy of the Ordinance of Secession. Uh, now, some of these things have been changed since then, but it was originally uh, meant to show you uh, some of the, um, how should we say, a contrast. Um, because that's part of what makes things interesting when you have contrast uh, and um, the different influences on Texas. Of course, you have uh, the seals of Spain, Mexico, France, the Republic of Texas, the Confederacy, and the United States with this Texas star there in the center. And yes, there is a crack in it. And no, that is not from somebody falling on it. Um, now, another thing that uh, people don't realize, uh, on the south side of the Capitol where you go in, uh, there are two small cannons. Those were cannons that were actually used in the Revolution and actually used in the Civil War, yet they are not the twin sisters. Uh, so uh, they do have historic significance, but they are not the twin sisters. So I need to go ahead and set that aside. And uh, underneath the Capitol, there really is the Treasury Vault. Uh, and they keep all kinds of securities there and valuables there, but they don't keep cash. They quit keeping cash there uh, after a robbery took place uh, at one of the uh, earlier Texas Capitals. They learned their lesson and they no longer keep cash there. Um, and, uh, you know, there in the rotunda, you have... Uh, the pictures of the various uh, heads of, uh, you know, governor and presidents of Texas, uh, including, you know, the provisional governor, Henry Smith, and the first president at interim, David G. Burnett, you know, because it's really easy to say, who was the first president of Texas? And people will rush in there and say, you know, Sam Houston, but it was actually David Burnett. So you need to be aware of that. Uh, and you have all these people. Uh, for us to uh, remember what they did. And uh, then some, uh, the uh, Capitol also houses uh, some of the historic flags uh, that were important in our history. Um, you know, you've got uh, the one carried by uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sidney Sherman at the Battle of San Jacinto. This is the one that has uh, the figure of the Lady Liberty uh, with the words liberty or death on a ribbon that's draped over the drawn sword. Uh, that was uh, from the Battle of San Jacinto. Uh, and you also have some famous paintings, you know, one called Dawn at the Alamo, one called the Battle of San Jacinto. Uh, and then there's another flag uh, that, um, what should we say? It, it was carried by William Ward, and it has Liberty or Death uh, written on it. And uh, so that's another uh, notable flag. Um, one day I may have to go ahead and do something just totally on the flags. Um, and um, so I encourage you, you know, when you go to the Texas Capitol, go ahead and... Uh, Take in everything that you see there, you know, because uh, although it's not just aesthetically pleasing, it's telling you a story uh, if you're willing to listen to it. Um, and uh, it's a fascinating story, uh, one worth repeating, and that uh, I'm here to try to preserve those things. Uh, I am thankful for those that went before us and went ahead and took steps to try to preserve those things. Uh, you know, now, used to uh, banks and oil companies, you know, when they were more into uh, helping people out, would have publications uh, 
that um, pointed out Texas history and historic events. In fact, you know, here's one uh, that I enjoy. Uh, the Texas Sketchbook, uh, Humble Oil put this out. And then, um, let's see, I'm trying to see where it is here. I've got the Texas History movies, uh, the original ones put out by Mobile Oil. Uh, oil companies did that, and I have found those and the ones put out by banks very helpful uh, because they captured it before all the political correctness. Uh, so if you can ever, you know, if you're in antique shops, go ahead and pick those things up. Um, I enjoyed telling you about the Capitol, the way it was originally designed. You know, things have been modified since then. Um, so I hope you take it in and enjoy it. Um, and until next time, this is Jeff Murrah wishing you via con Dios, my friends. Goodbye.